Hi everybody. Um, I got a couple of questions with regards to what is a what's the difference between a first order, a second order, a higher order, whatever <laughs> type of factor. So I thought let me use the um, the grid scale like uh, to give you a practical example. So according to Duckworth and her instrument, um, grit is made up of two factors. So it's made up of um, perseverance of interest. Uh, consistency of interest, right, and perseverance of effort. So basically perseverance and interest or passion as she call it, she calls it. So passion and perseverance. So this is what the instrument measures. It measures two factors, perseverance and interest, made up of item 1, 4, 6, 9 and 10, and 12, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So this is what the measure says. But remember, in latent variable modeling, we are we're modeling things that aren't there. We're modeling things that are not observed. So in this case, for example, you can clearly see that grit is not there, right? But yet the instrument says that it measures grit. So basically, there are, there are a couple of theoretical permutations that grit could manifest in, but I'd like to show you three, the most common. So if we look at the first model, this is what we call a first order factorial model. Why? Because the thing that we're making up grit, it doesn't exist. So, but it is a function of all of the items um, working together gives us grit, right? So all of the items load directly onto grit. So that is what we call a first order factor, right? Because it's the first thing that we observe, that we estimate, not observe, that we uh, estimate that we make up out of observed stuff. The second model is, you can see, it's exactly the same as the first model, but now there are two first order factors, right? Now, what makes this different than a normal one factor model is that the, there's a relationship, there's a covariance between interest and perseverance, right? So, there is this covariance correlation with statement in M plus between these different factors because we assume that they are measuring the same thing. So they are related in some way. Okay. So first order factor, all the items load directly onto one latent factor. This two factor or three factor uh, first order model is you've got three different latent factors. And they're made up of different items, but they are correlated with one another. So if there was a third variable, the third variable, like let's say model was a variable, it would be correlated with interest and it would be correlated with perseverance, right? And perseverance would then also be correlated with it. So there will be like another um, thing here and they'd also relate to each other like that. The last model, and this is I think the more complex one, is our second order factorial model. Our second order factorial model is made up of our two first order factors, but now there's no correlation between them anymore. There's no covariance between the two. So what happens now is what's similar that happens in a one factor model, where instead of having items load onto a factor that doesn't exist, we've got latent factors making up an item that doesn't exist. So the same principles apply. So here, grit is made up of consistency of interest and perseverance of effort. So this path would be constrained to one, and this path would be allowed to be freely estimated. Now, like we know, this might have convergent issues. But I hope that this kind of explains to you what the difference is between the three factors. One factor model, all of the items load directly onto it, one line is regressed to one. Two factor first order model, We've got two uh, factors, latent factors. They're correlated. There's a covariance between them. They're made up of their specific uh, a priori um, items. And this item is constrained to one and that item is constrained to one. And finally, we've got the second order factor, which is made, which is basically the, um, the first order two factor models of this model, but we have a third latent factor like leading up to it. Okay. Um, and that path is in constraint to one. I, and if you have issues with convergence, what do you do, right? The first thing is we take the one here away. So in other words, we let it estimate freely. Um, and we take that one and we put it on grit. So we constrain 
um, grit's variance to be 1, and we freely estimate that um, path. So if that still doesn't run, and you still get convergence issues, then you constrain both of these paths to be equal. So you say, give it a name, A equals A, right? So give it a name. So constrain it to be the same. And then your model will run. I hope that helps.